Мадагаска от пирамида, именно он определяет того, кто будет разбивать пирами... первую пирамиду, и им стал Торстен Хоман. Итак, матч начинается. Торстен Хома будет разбивать пирамиду. Ну и мы видим вот это приспособление. Мейджи трек. Так только его не называют. Но он предназначен именно для того, чтобы очень плотно стояли шары на столе. Именно для того, чтобы не было никакой погрешности в разбое пирамиды. Штучку эту придумали японцы. Не сразу, но постепенно ее приняли практически все игроки в мире. Очень важно, очень важно разбить, очень важно правильно сделать первый разбой. Так, давайте посмотрим, что же упало. Есть девятка в центральном узе. Не самая очевидная позиция на столе. Нет, скажем так, прямой возможности атаковать и э, положить шар, первый шар в узу. Но на то они и финалисты, профессионалы, чтобы принять правильное решение. Торстен Хоуман устала, спортсмен, который в 2013 году, да, заказал ему главу лузу. Очень важен каждый удар, очень важно э, не отдавать сопернику игру. Мы говорили о том, что цена ошибки в пуле максимально важна. Итак, смотрите. Да. Да, заказ выполнен, и это все очень и очень хорошо. Дальше двойка в центр. Мы понимаем, что необходимо потом будет выйти на третий шар, красный. Ну, он уже пойдет в угловую лузу. Чуть-чуть проведет дальше биток Торсен Хоман с тем, чтобы уже аккуратненько выйти на третий шар. Да, вот. Все ровно, все качественно, и мы понимаем, что здесь, в этой встрече, борьба будет очень напряженная. И действительно, не только важно выиграть разбой, выиграть встречу, но важно очень вести игру от начала до конца. Центральную лузу. Чуть-чуть подбил четверку Торстен Хоман. Попросил при этом почистить биток. Ну вот, существует много вариантов и специальные такие приспособления, чтобы точно задать место и чтобы не было погрешностей в том плане, где стоит шар, который чистили. Но чуть-чуть не нравится позиция Хоману. Это обусловлено тем, что сейчас он будет играть шар в центральную лузу, и биток уйдет чуть-чуть дальше от пятерки, которую нужно будет играть дальше. В принципе, это небольшая проблема, но восьмерка мешает, потому что необходимо вернуть максимально на удобную позицию биток. Да, хороший удар. Хороший удар. Знаете, есть такая присказка, что 
до счету 3-3 игра не считается, и мы понимаем, что вот эти как раз э, первые партии, они э, определяют они определяют начало, они определяют старт. Да, ну вот очень хорошо. Очень хорошо перешел Торстон на шестой шаг, хотя чуть-чуть близко. И, пожалуй, если бы он чуть-чуть дальше э, перевел биток, было бы удобнее, но, как я уже говорил, вот эта завязка, эта завязка в матче, она она является э, лишь стартом этого финала, финала 11 кубка Кремля по полу 10. И не могу не сказать о том, что этот турнир в этом году впервые включен в мировой рейтинг. Да, смотрите, не будет играть, не будет играть э, напрямую в центральную лузу. Заказал дуплет Торсен Хоман. Не самый, пожалуй, очевидный удар. Или все-таки центр определяется. Определяет для себя так. Все-таки напрямую. Ну, это его право. Выбрать. Не только выбрать, но и определить, и потом сделать удар так. Да, вот он опасался именно того, что заденет биток десятку, и не будет гарантированного выхода на седьмой шар. Любая погрешность, вот мы сейчас видели, Торсон коснулся стола, любая погрешность в ударе крайне не нужна игрокам, а они всегда проверяют, чтобы на пути шаров не было никаких соринок, не было никаких вот даже мельчайших проблем. Так. Ну... Не самый лучший выход, я бы сказал, но, с другой стороны, пока никаких очевидных проблем на столе нет. Да, ну, собственно, здесь уже все понятно. Торстен Хоман. Открывает счет в этой партии, и счет становится 1-0 в пользу Торсона Хоумана в финале 11-го Кубка Кремля по полу-10, турнира, который в этом году привлек очень большое количество иностранных спортсменов, турнира, который в этом году имеет призовой фонд в размере 50 тысяч долларов, и благодаря этому турнира, который введен в мировой рейтинг. Спортсмены играют до 9 побед. Финал. Финальный сет чуть-чуть больше, чем э, в предыдущих матчах. Во всех играх спортсмены играли до 8. Здесь в финале до 9 побед. Ну что ж, э -э, игра, что называется, только началась, и только сейчас первый раз к столу подходит Алекс Казакис, поочередный разбой, разбой, который э -э, в, этом, в этой транскрипции сможет показать игру каждого соперника, игру э -э, каждого игрока, на что они способны, как они могут разбивать. Итак, следим за шрами. Семерка, тройка в центральных противоположных лузах, но первый шар пока не играется. Очевидной игры нету. Больше того скажу, даже напрямую чуть-чуть виден шар. Но это не возможность атаковать. Таким образом уже можно прямо сейчас сделать вывод о том, что 
Алекс будет отыгрываться. Примеряется он к удару. Присматривается, насколько можно будет сыграть аккуратно. Ну и самое главное, безусловно, это то, чтобы не только сыграть, но отыграться максимально качественно, чтобы не оставить на столе позицию так, чтобы смог сыграть его соперник. Не самый простой удар, очень важная задача для Алекса именно в том, чтобы именно в том, чтобы э, все было сделано правильно. Счет, напомню, 1-0 в пользу Торстона Хомана. Он взял первую партию. Итак, вот игрыш. Да, очень качественно отыгрался Алекс Казакис, поставил биток на короткий борт. И это очень хороший удар. Мы уже говорили о том, что в этом году представлено максимальное количество иностранных участников. Это обусловлено и тем, что с этого года кубок стал, вошел в мировой рейтинг. На следующий год, кстати, могу уже сейчас анонсировать эту информацию. Турнир э, станет не просто рейтингом, но он также войдет в рейтинг для отбора европейской сборной на Москве Кап в силу того, что в следующем году наш турнир будет проведен не в ноябре, как сложилось за последние годы уже некая традиция, а в сентябре с 19 по 23 сентября 2017 года. Вообще 2017 год будет отмечен еще и тем, что, как уже сказано было на церемонии открытия, Ян Андерсон, президент Всемирной ассоциации Пула, уже заявил и анонсировал проведение в следующем году, в 2017 году, чемпионата мира среди юниоров. Чемпионата мира, который никогда не проводился в России. Ну вот мы сейчас видим, что пятерка напрямую в угловую лузу, потом по короткому борту в противоположную пойдет. Шестой шар. 
восьмой стоит справа от нас, и он также уже практически на лузе. Пока никаких э, неожиданностей в этой партии не ожидается. И таким образом, таким образом, Алекс Казакис, скорее всего, сравняет счет. В углу налево подымет, скорее всего, шар с тем, чтобы в ту же лузу играть. Девятку, Алекс. Да, все верно. Вот еще важно, когда игра читается или не читается. Это является определителем как раз для профессионалов и для зрителей, тех, кто разбирается в пуле. Есть читающиеся позиции и та позиция, в которой мы видим как будет продолжать игрок, что будет продолжать игрок. И здесь, кстати, надо сказать о том, что в этом году впервые на Кубке Кремля столы... Опс! Да, вот здесь вот была некая... Некая... Э, скажем так, оплошность со стороны Алекса Казакиса. Он даже улыбается, потому что, ну, откровенно говоря, ему повезло. Ему повезло, потому что биток чуть-чуть не упал в центральную лузу, и это было бы для него поражением в этой партии. Но стол сыграл в пользу Алекса Казакиса, и, и сейчас он... Чуть-чуть не, чуть -чуть не сравнял свое психологическое, скажем, состояние, не выровнял. Алекс понял, что, в общем-то, абсолютно очевидный удар, абсолютно очевидный шар, но ему необходимо чуть-чуть выровнять волнение после этого битка, который чуть было не упал в центральную лузу. Итак, Да, десятка в лузе, и счет стал 1-1. Now, I noticed yesterday that Thorsten Holman was breaking from the left side and uh, on the last break his first break here he broke from the right side I'm curious why he moved over he was having good results yesterday from breaking from the left so we'll see what he does here now he's going over to the right and he's taking some speed off didn't hit it quite as hard as he did. Well, he stopped the cue ball right dead in the middle of the table. But I don't think he, I don't think he got the pop on it there that he wanted. He made a ball. Huh? Oh, well, he's straight in. He's got a good starter. Straight in on the one. That was a beautiful break. He must have practiced and got it figured out that, that the right side was the way to go. Well, we've got the tables marked with lines for the template, and we used a laser to try to get it as straight as possible, but nothing is absolutely perfect. So I think there's little minor deviations between the tables. So you have to like practice on the table you're going to play on to find a sweet spot for breaking. Yeah, I've noticed like if there's a referee racking, sometimes the referee will, might have it a little bit twisted or or high or low or something like that. And I'm not real sure if I should move it over or what the best play is on, you know, to what, for where to break from. But uh, I'm not sure if Thorsten hooked himself behind the nine there. It looks like uh, I think that's the two right in front of the side. He's looking at it like he's got a shot. But I don't know if the three passes the seven. Yep. We're having a few computer issues, so it's hard to see.
Yeah, he couldn't see the, uh, he was hooked behind that nine, so he decided to play a little kick safety, which was nice. Looks like he's got him hooked behind the ten. Okay. That's not connected to anything. He's going to put that on full screen for us. Looks like Thorson got him behind the 10 ball. I can't tell if he's got him completely hooked, though. Yeah, Looks like he does. Hooked, but I think he's, he's looking at maybe a jump shot. That's well, not such a bad jump shot. You're only going over the edge of the ball. I just don't see any what he's going to do with the jump shot. He, it's not like he's going to, oh, he's going to call it in the right corner. Now, this shot, if he doesn't make it in the right corner, the chances are the two and the cue ball are going to be pretty close to each other. Um, unless if he hits it kind of half ball and banks the two back up the table. He can see the ball. Oh, he can see the ball. He's trying to make it. He doesn't have to jump it. Okay, well. It's a tough shot, though. You're, it's a backwards it's cut. It's still a very tough shot. And and you're, it's, you're not, it's not free, so if you miss it, most likely you're, you're going to leave a shot on the two. He hit it really nice, too. That's a great shot. Where's the cue ball going? Well, he ran into the three. Doesn't look like the three passes a seven. Yeah, I think the three might pass. That was a tough shot on the two. <clears throat> he decided to shoot at it because he thought the safety was tougher than the shot, which it looked like I didn't see an easy safety, so... Um, well, at that speed, he also had a chance for a return safety if he missed the two. Yeah, he could have played like a containing safety where he just played the two instead of cutting it maybe over to the rail and try and play the cue ball behind the six. He could have maybe did that. But You're starting to sound like a snooker player. You know that? Oh. Containing safety, that's their terminology. Well, but it's good. Yeah, it makes sense, it though. It is because if, you're, if you leave the ball open... It's not really a safety. It's just, you know, you're just trying not to lose the game right away. You're trying to get another maybe kick shot later. So. I think, I think Thorson, he, he was trying to make the three in the, in the corner, but it was, didn't really go by the seven. And, uh, looks like he may have got fortunate and hooked, uh, Alex behind the nine ball. Yeah, Alex can't see the uh, three. He's going to need to kick. Okay, so from here, I like kicking this uh, with like middle ball. Try and kick it, kick it in the corner, but hit it hard enough to where the three. If you miss it in the corner, you miss it low. Maybe first diamond, and then the three goes two rails around towards like the four six and then if you can stop the cue ball he has a chance for return safety yeah where it might you might make it you're really not trying to make it you're trying to get the safety you're trying but to he'll but he'll call it in the corner just in case it yeah, does call go it in the corner just in case hit it with the force follow Well, Alex has a tough shot here. He's hooked on the nine ball. So he kicked to the in rail. And he made a good hit, but 
He left Thorson where he could see the three ball. Looks like the three does pass into the... Okay. Well, good shot by Thorson there. He's a little bit straight on the four. So he can draw back maybe two feet to get a little angle on the three or on the five so he can take the cue ball maybe between the seven six. <clears throat> well, Actually draw done. that a little bit further. Now he might be straight. He might need to draw the cue ball back now. Or maybe he can cheat the pocket and come come back out. Yeah, he just hit it pretty firm and cheated the pocket. Well, from here, I just like stopping the cue ball, shoot the seven up in the other corner, and uh, main things to get get the cue ball on the right side of the nine, where you can shoot the the nine in the side and bring the cue ball down for the ten. Well, Thorsten looks like he's in stroke. He's shooting the balls with a lot of pace. You know, he's shooting them pretty firm, letting his stroke out. That shows that he has a lot of confidence. And he's got good timing in his stroke. So if you're if you're hitting the middle of the pocket and you're hitting everything pretty firm, your timing's good in your stroke. That makes it 2-1, Thorsten. Alex checking the rack, making sure everything's tight. Never know about the referee. Referee's been doing a good job when I was checking the rack, but it looks like Alex sees a little something that might not be touching. You know, it's important to try and get him, get him frozen. Well, good thing he looked, because if he didn't look, it might not have opened up right. Now he's breaking a little closer to the middle of the table. Yeah, he's breaking more from the left side. I think the side of the table for me, oh, the nine just hung and fell, last one rolling, but he's hooked behind the six. For me, if I'm breaking from the left or the right side, I think it matters if you're left or right hander and what your mistake is in your stroke. So, like if you're aiming center and, and maybe you turn your body a little bit to the left when you come through and you tend your tendency is to hit left English on the cue ball. If you break from the left side, that would bring the one more to the right. Whereas if you, or the cue ball, would go to the left. Whereas if you break it from the right side, and you make that same mistake, the cue ball is going to have a different spin on it. You know, So maybe that's why Thorsten switched over to the right side. You were teasing me in Las Vegas. I was playing on a seven-foot oh, table. Oh, yeah. And you walk by just as I broke the balls, and you turn around and kind of laugh and said, "Nice break." Yeah, that was my 17 mile an hour break. Your 17 that's that, mile that's, an hour that's break. That's my big one. I always back off my break so that I can be more accurate hitting the, the head ball. I'd rather be accurate than hard. Okay. Because I, I, if I go too hard and I miss just a hair, then it tends to slide in the side on me a lot. 
Well, we have a treat here, folks. We have uh, Mika Eminen just showed up. Uh, Yay, Mika! He was uh, he was a little lady. Uh, he did his uh, five mile uh, run around Moscow this morning, I think. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's normally right. Is it five or ten miles you do? Especially after last night, you know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Corey was my partner in crime. Yeah, we were playing some pool last night. We were playing uh, some pyramid, and we yeah. did good. You know. We did all right. Yeah. So uh, two one, huh? Who uh, who broke the balls here? Uh, Kazakis. Kazakis. So okay. Yeah, Thorson won the lag. All right. They've held serve so far. Well, not much to do here other than safety, right? Yeah, I kind of like two and eight are tied up. I kind of like maybe thin the one towards the two eight and bring he, the cue ball between. He called the one in the, in the corner bank shot. Oh, bank, huh? In wow. between the f the three and the five. Wow. I think wow. he's playing safe, but he called it that he way. He called just it just in case. Oh, he was just trying to put the cue ball behind the sevens. What he was trying to and do. And he ran into that ball. <laughs> that was didn't a little work bit unlucky out. that he ran that he ran into that ball full because if he so runs full. into the high uh, the side of it, either Any way, side. he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> That was pretty unlucky. He got the cue ball where he wanted. Do you think Torsen uh, has the gap here between the 5 and 10 to go into the cluster? I think he can make it in the corner, yeah, and he might have an angle to no, actually no, go I mean, into I'm the, the uh, 2. Uh, maybe in the gone. side? Well, I was thinking if he room? shot the 1 in the corner and run the cue ball right into the 2. Yeah, but that's it's a bit risky. Yeah. It's a bit risky. It's a bit aggressive, maybe, because if you miss it and then open up the cluster, you're What about playing the screwed. 1... Safe and bring the one run the cue ball right into the eight. Just kind of roll the cue ball up on the eight. I think he could do that. Maybe he's playing the one and then playing safe. Oh, he tried it in the side. Yeah, he. Wow, he, got he tried to play for the bank or something, or <laughs> maybe just playing to play safe. But well, this is really here. difficult right here. Again, as long as you hit the ball and you don't leave anything easy. I mean, the cluster's still there, so. Yeah. Maybe he can clip the side of the one and run kind of full into the six and then send the one up towards where the five and three is. Yeah, if you can stop the cue ball there or, or even follow the cue ball with some right spin after it hits the six. That's right, but he's so close to the rail here, you don't want to interfere too much with the accuracy because it's a long shot. Yeah. If you put like any spin on it, you know, you're hit. like massing the ball. Looks like a very thin hit. Oops. Wow. That's a, that's well, that was a disaster. A risk. That's a disaster. <laughs> well, you still Not have the, the the two eight are together, but he, he should be able to break them apart here. I like setting well, cause it up straight. Well, because I just caught the one two full there, and if that he, made a thinner hit on the six. He he was supposed to clip the one thinner. He's going to try and draw this back into the two, and carry him the two off the eight towards the upper left hand corner. He hit it kind of soft, don't you think? I mean. He hit I the wrong side of the he two. He wanted two. to hit the rail in the two. I at thought the same it was going to. I thought it was going to rip it. I mean, he he kind of hit it a little it. soft. Well, he wanted to hit the other side of the two. He just didn't hit it the way he wanted. I yeah, think he shot but I don't think there fast. was any risk in like just stroking it real strong. Yeah. Because the two was gonna two was going to go the towards the corner anyway. Maybe. I think Missed Thorson's, it. he's rushing his shots right now. He he shot that ball in hand way too he, fast. He, he might have been a little excited that he got such a good opportunity. Yeah. I notice people do that. Like, if I make a mistake, they run up to the table. You know, like, uh, the balls aren't going anywhere, you know. Yeah. Instead of, like, digesting the yeah, situation. Yeah, let's just figure out what you need to do. And, and let the other guys suffer after the mistake. <laughs> yeah, most some guys, <laughs> when you make a mistake, they just go ahead and take their bathroom break, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Leave you Rub it think in. about it for a while. But, uh, so, Kazaki is fortunate to get back to the table and uh, maybe level things up here. We don't have the, what do you call it, the commentary today? We don't have we the don't feed. Have the, face the Facebook feed. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the feed was kind of fun. Yeah, the... Uh, but I guess it's, I mean, it's out there somewhere. 
Yeah. We'll see if we can get the the. Uh, Do you think so? We'll see if we can get the commenter or the uh, the chat chat up, so people can uh, chime in and give their two cents on the match. That's always fun. All right, they're working on the feed. Let's see what's up. We'll have some chat chat room action. We can listen to all the all the pool detectives. I call them pool detectives because they sit at home on the internet Bad and try and know. match up games, and they never leave their house. I mean, I don't th yesterday like we had the pleasure of, you know, there was a couple of uh, pros out there, you know, Jason was watching. Yeah. Darren. Darren, you know, uh, it's kind of fun to say, see them comment on a few things and just say what's up. Yeah, it's Little shout outs. It's good to see that the players, um, when they're not playing in a tournament, that they're still fans of the game, that they're still watching. You know, they're not out doing something else. You know, sometimes if you're been playing five tournaments in a row, you yeah. might want to go, you know, play tennis or something. You know, but well, especially um, this is such a quality stream. I think they enjoy watching this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, after four racks, it's two to two, and both players have held serve on their breaks. If it keeps up like this, it might be pretty important that Thorson won the lag. Yeah. People that always overlook that's that always part of the, the edge, game. you know. Yeah. And alternate break, especially when you win the lag, you're about like I, th I think 55, 45 favorite out of the gate to win the match. To yeah. win the match. Yeah. The lag's pretty important, especially in the alternate if break not more, format. You know. And. Uh, <laughs> It's really important for the guy that didn't win the lag to try to uh, break the serve and then hold advantage. Okay, Otherwise, so you know, the odds stay the same. I was talking about Thorsten moved to the... R now he's breaking from the right side of the table. When yesterday he was breaking from the left. Is that correct, Mika? Almost try, but just made the three. I see a safety coming up here. I would probably play the one around the angles between the four and eight. Mm -hmm. Try to get it tight on the rail, and then uh, send the one ball behind the, you know, towards the five. Pretty much what you said. He, he thinned the one over by the five seven. I don't see anything easy for Thorsten here, kick wise. Looks like the four and two have him. Have him. Uh, you mean for Kazakis? Yeah. Yeah, that four ball is pretty big there too. I mean, and otherwise it would have been could have been a two rail kick. I think he can go one rail like underneath the two one rail but he's going to need to be pretty fortunate yeah. to get a safety out of it. I think maybe if you hit it slow and catch the one like is there any way there's a gap between the 9 and 10? That's what I was looking at. Looks like there is. I just don't know I if don't you think can get the is. edge of the one where you can get a return safety. I think my play would be go go underneath the two and just hit it soft and try and play the one to maybe go up on the five ball. If the if the, the six the wasn't to the bottom if rail, the, if the six wasn't there, he, he might take the gap between the nine and ten. But the six kind of hinders with that. He's just jacked up. But it's yeah, it's a small gap. I think that's what he's looking at doing. I think I like hitting this easy. So there's a chance you get hit the bottom of the he one. He called. I think he seven. called the seven. Just called in case. The seven. Yeah, that's a good speed. 
He just hit the wrong That's side. A good of hit, it. unfortunate. I think he wanted to hit the other side of it. He would have got a yeah. better result. Well, that might have been the right side if it was a little softer, but. So does the five go by the seven? Looks this like it's pretty this tight. This is not an easy out. No. The four, do, I, I don't think the four goes by the six either. So. You want to make sure you get some angle on the two to try and come over and get on get on the four in the same pocket you shoot the two. You don't want to be straight in on this two. Well, I think he overhit that one a little bit. Now he's real long and straight. We got Walid, Walid Majid there, and got Martin Sawich. Okay. Saw Walid in uh, Kuwait. Yeah. Well, I don't see. Hey, I think it's going to take a big power stroke to get on the other side of the four here. For me, I kind of like just rolling this, roll this up a little bit, and maybe play the carom on the four six or the combination on the four six. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Looks like he's or drawing maybe, it back. Maybe bank. Yeah, wow. he tried to do too much with the he's cue ball there. All over the table here. He didn't leave anything straight in. Uh, he's Kazakis can bank the two, you know, up table and then send the cue ball behind the five. Yeah, you know, I like and that this shot. you got the cluster of balls there. I mean, you got the whole wall of balls. Yeah, he can also s kind of stop the cue ball and s take the cue ball straight over underneath the 10. That's true. You know, that's kind of, uh, it's a big wall between the 10 and 9 also. And that might I'd block probably some follow kicks it. too. You know, if you can get the cue ball right on the 10, it blocks the right rail kick. If yeah, you get but you got to be careful with the speed because you got to hit it. I think you might even be able draw. to call the, well, it's it, it's no value if you call the 10. I was thinking maybe he could carry him the 10 in the side, but... No value there because it just spots up. The rules we're playing is if you make any sure combination on here. the ten, it doesn't. It's not a game win. It just spots up and they continue. Is he lining up for a combo or something? I mean, uh, doesn't I really like don't. It no, looks he like he's playing safe behind the ten. I think that's why he called the ten on the side, just in case he carried it in. No, he Dude, went, he for, went for a combo, man. That, that was, was crazy. That Such was an easy safe. Yeah, that was a low percentage. When the balls are that far f apart from each other, you know, the two is a good three feet away from the seven. Um, the hit spot on the seven is so small. Uh, good night, Ed. That it's too just bad the stream, I mean, too, too tough, bad the final had to start this early because, you know, a little bit later would have been better for the States and for Europe and for Asia. Yeah. It would have still been all right. Yeah, and you could have ran another four miles this morning. That's right. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> That's derriere intelligent to you. All right, so uh, Kazagi's got a little fortunate to leave safe here. Went for that wild shot, but that was a nice bank. Another nice bank. Nice bank. Well, bank. Paul, you, you're and right about what? Thorson's banking is pretty strong. What do you think? He's f he, he might be uh, in the finals with uh, John Brumback this year at Derby City. Who knows? Actually, if I'm picking somebody for the finals, I'm going to pick a Filipino. Brumback's tough action at the, the bank, now. Brumback's by far the best banker I've That's ever amazing. seen. It's amazing. It's so it's awesome to amazing watch. Amazing to watch. He's a nice guy, too. I'll tell you what he could do here on the four if it doesn't go. Brombach's no. got a lot of heart, man. And he plays uh, rotation games pretty good, too. I mean, it's pretty sporty. I'll tell you what. He would be a, he would be a good... If Mark, if Mark Wilson, uh, he could have picked Brumbach, he'd be good in the in the, dirt, in the Moscone <laughs> Cup, I think, right? <laughs> That's an interesting uh, observation. Wow, that was a great combo. That was a really good combo there. What do you think of that? Brumbach for Moscone Cup? Um, I don't know about that. No? No. Thank you, Ed. No, I wrote.
no problem as the eight ball. Appreciate huh? the compliments. But this eight's tough to get on, huh? Just come out a little bit. You want the cue ball about Ed, where it you is now, hang right? Out. Ed, you got to hang out a little bit more. You know, just hang in there. I came a little too far there. He didn't want Thank you, he Stevie. He's All right, what do you do here? Well, you got to hit this pretty firm. He's gonna, yeah. he's gonna draw it and stun. You know, come across the table. Hard to judge the speed. Oh, he That's hit it really hard. Shot. He's in stroke. I can tell. He's, he's when he's hitting shots that well. He's got a nice, nice rhythm going. He's, he's almost gonna play like a stop shot here. I mean, you don't want to draw it too much and get too straight because you have to come back across to play the ten in the side. Maybe just get a touch off the rail. Yeah, that's a good shot there. Torson again. He's uh, he gets that spring in his uh, step. You know he's playing well. Yeah, he's moving quickly around. Kind of jumped up a little bit on that shot. Yeah, I've seen a little bit of that with him. I don't think it's that bad as long as it's the, not as yeah. As long as the cue ball's already gone, you maybe it's not that bad. Uh, transporter. Hapa plata. What's up, buddy? AKA transporter. Hope to come back to Brazov soon. We got a question here from David. David, Dave, which Taiwan player do you guys think is the strongest now from Chang and Two Coes? That's Chang uh, Lin. And Chen Jin Lin and the two co brothers. And, oh, uh, and then there's Kevin. I mean, Kevin's Kevin up Chang in the mix. Plays good, yeah. I always liked uh, Chang Jin Lin's game. I would say Chang Jin Lin's probably the best 10 ball player. Chang's pretty strong. I mean, uh, but Ko Pinyi's Ko Pinyi is uh, very polished. You know. Even the little co is strong, man. It's like a... Oh, we got a scratch in the break. This could be a... This is really bad. You know, there's a third co. Did you know that? Didn't know that. No way. Another they, brother? They, they there's a, a younger like one. Breed like little gremlins? <laughs> and little gremlins. <laughs> the, the, the youngest one is slightly over six feet tall. And Cope no says way. his little brother breaks better than either of the other two by far. He oh. says, we have a hard time beating him. There's too many brothers. But he doesn't know the moves and the position play, but he runs yeah. so many racks, he's hard to beat. He doesn't even play pool. He's a dart player. Oh. Well, if he breaks better he might, at 10 know. ball, then he's better than the other ones because that's all that means anything is the break. 10 ball. Looks pretty tight, but I think it goes. Well, if Torsen runs out here, I think he uh, goes into like probably like 70 30 favorite to win the match. Don't you think? If you this were is a little bit if you were a bookie, here. what would you, you know? I think this is a tough shot. This four two to one favorite to get back on the five. Oh yeah, he, I think he overran the position here a little I bit. Think, I think if he goes, uh, I think he's going to play inside English though. But he overran this position. Inside English, he he has to hit ball first. If he hits rail first, he might scratch. Oh, he's screwed, yeah. If he Even if he hits ball first, I don't think he's going to get past the seven. Because the table yeah, slides a little so bit. Yeah, because it's so slidey, yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, I think he's going to be doing good to get maybe right can, around where the six is. Maybe he can just run into the seven and just play. He might have to play the long shot on the five. I mean, I'll take that. Right? This is, this is difficult. That's probably the best shot he can get out of it. 
Either that, why don't you just play, what about playing safe? Just bank the ball, can you bank it to the two rails the and then the just pocket. uh... Yeah, you, I was wondering if he has any the balls of it. Right over the hole, I know, right? I know, but it's, you know... How about this? Just cinch the ball, and come over, uh, you know, just, take just the where the seven on the is. Five. Take the long just shot. play the inside English. Just come around, you know, maybe... Yeah, come short of the few seven. few inches uh, Or even hit seven. it with outside. What about playing it with inside English and elevating the acoustic a little bit? Well, yeah, like a little Massey. Uh, a little mini Massey. That's what he's doing. He's taking the long shot. But see, if I take the long shot, instead of hitting it with inside, I would hit it with outside. And just barely miss the ten. You're, you're right. Get a little higher. I actually, uh, I agree, agree with the uh, Corey there. De definitely, and <coughs> would have got. Less, I think he's got a, a little bit less bridge distance. Out of the pocket. He's got a little longer bridge. Maybe since he he's thought going out of the pocket. And maybe he thought the spin was going to grab a little bit more. <coughs> See, if he was a few inches over to the right, he'd have a real short bridge, which I, I think is makes it tough on your timing. But you see how he's bridging out of the pocket. Look at he's the, he's, he's putting longer. draw on the ball. I mean, this is a very tough shot. I would just, I mean, I think you just kind of make it and then just come back where he is now. Yeah. Yeah, he hit a little See, thick. that's like really uh, making them things <laughs> difficult. Well, he's uh, a bit fortunate. I think he left a the gap. A little bit of a gapper the there. I think, I think he can see the five straight in. He can see the five. I'm not sure if he can make it, but he can definitely oh, he can make see it. it. Guaranteed. Oh, you can see it. You have an angle. He can see the table. Oh, he can see it. It's straight in. Wow. Yeah, that's a difficult shot for Thorsten on on these tables with the new cloth because it's a lot of distance and the speed he hit it. The cue ball's deflecting a lot, and I noticed he hit a few of those shots fat in his Gonna previous matches. Gonna play a stop shot here. Let's keep it simple. David's suggesting that I should uh, pick up, uh, start playing a little bit more one pocket. I've Apparently, seen you he's play a fan pocket. of he's a fan of your one pocket. He's a fan of my one pocket. Mika, well, Mika, your one pocket. Mika oh. beat me in Lu er, Louisiana at that one pocket tournament. Remember? Yeah. He beat me. I beat you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Mika is I'm not no a slouch. slouch at one pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody who can play strong straight pool is always going to be a threat in one pocket. I think uh, I agree. any yeah. top player, if they just start playing one pocket for a year, they'll pick the game up. They'll start because it's all the I same shots. I like playing one pocket every now and then, you know. It's all the sh same shots. And Mika, you have a lot of creativity too, so y you can uh, come up with some cool shots, I think. I just need a little bit more patience. One pocket is definitely a game of patience. Oh. Well, this is a very bad mistake from uh, Kazakis. Well, he wasn't quite straight in the five, so he had to go to the end rail and come up. And he goes back from 45-55 to 30-70. But Corey, you didn't respond to my uh, question about the uh, odds. The odds of the match. If if Torsten goes up 4-2. What what are the you know odds? Well, if Thorsten goes up four two, is he like two to one favorite? And Thorsten won the lag. That means that he's two turnovers ahead. Yeah, he's right. He's so he can, yeah. He's, he, he's we need two mistakes from two. Yeah, if everybody runs out, Kazakas is not in control of his destiny anymore. He can he he has to hope that. Thorsten Some makes mistakes. two mistakes to give him a chance. Yep. That's the only thing I don't like about alternate break. I don't break. like the alternate break. Well, I mean, Actually, any, even if a guy period. is up 10-0 to zero on me, win or break, I'm not, I mean, I'm worried about it, but I still feel like I have a chance in the set. It's not over, because if I get a shot, I can control the table, I can break, if I break well, I can, I can play safeties or, or, you know, I can potentially win the match. I don't have to depend on my opponent to make a mistake to win the match. 
here Kazakas isn't in control of his own destiny anymore he has to hope Thorsten makes a few mistakes because if Thorsten plays perfect from here on out the set's already over yes so well I'm going to say something so controversial then okay Bob Jewett is one of the smartest people I know he's retired now so he started keeping statistics on pool and he's analyzed a, a bunch of matches of alternate break and winter breaks and he said the odds of winning either format are exactly the same after looking at thousands of matches. Well, I Which would I didn't believe it, but he said the numbers don't lie. He said it's statistically a dead heat. Now, I don't player, know how he does I agree his with numbers, you. but... I think the winter break format is a little bit more exciting. It's, it's more for the fans. As a player, I'd rather have alternate breaks. I have an equal chance with the other guy. Depends how good of a player you are. The top players should all want winter break. I mean, just for the fact that if you look at the U.S. Open, I mean, Jason Shaw made a couple of amazing comebacks against uh, Ko and Chang. Uh, he was down 10-4. It gets exciting. And he beat he beat Ko. You know. He ended up coming back, and then uh, he almost beat Chang too, yeah. in a similar fashion. And uh, that's uh, thanks to the winner break format. I mean, that otherwise it w he would have been yeah. down 10-4. Buried. Yeah, it's it's really tough for that to happen, and and I think the fans like seeing those big comebacks, uh, or a few a bunch of racks run and. Well, Thorsten makes a long break, but he didn't have a good shot, but he played a fantastic safety. Yeah, except the one came, uh, you know, pretty all far the way back, back on the table. Made made a it's I mean it's an easy hit on the one. Now uh, you just have to. Uh, you know what kind of safe? I mean, the, the kick here is to send the one towards the rail parallel to the seven and then try to send the cue ball. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you can call, call the side pocket, but, you know, to send the send the cue ball also, like, behind the seven, you know, on the same, you could also the same line. You could also kick and hit the bottom side of the one and, and send, send the, the cue ball, ball like, like two rails yeah, behind the behind cluster. Behind that big cluster, if you hit it firm. That's... that's that's uh, also a good shot, but a little bit tougher to control uh, the actual hit. He did it. Oh, he did made he call that? I think he called the one there. He better. Wow, what a shot. Look at this. He's got perfect shape wow, on the two. Wow, that's amazing. And he can just run into the nine, just yeah. open up the Yeah, follow five. this forward, bump the nine out of the way, open the rack up. <laughs> Looks like he's uh, taking control of part of his destiny here. A great shot. I mean, he, he don't don't have to bump the nine now. He can also bump it off the four. But it was a free shot. That's the kind of stuff you need to do in order to come back in the match like this. He's probably a little pumped up now. He should be. Yeah, it's a great shot. Even if it didn't go, I liked where he where he had the cue ball going. Yeah, he he was playing Corey shot. It was it was a in. it was good, good odds. Is he gonna go behind the nine or? Uh I think he got high enough he can draw it on this side of the nine. He just he needs a little to. bit of he angle. Left -handed. He <laughs> needs a little bit of angle on the seven, definitely, yeah. Looks a bit straight. You have to be careful here. Because the nine's still there. Oh, he just stunned it. That was a good shot. This is a touchy shot when you go past the side pocket. Yeah, I don't like I don't like it visually as a player. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not a comfortable I don't shot. It's not anybody's favorite shot. Well 
four three and uh, now Gasakis just needs to hold serve so to speak. Surprised we have only 200 viewers here. It was, you know, well, that's the time difference to the U.S. Part of the timing. I mean, it's maybe there's something going on in this. Uh, why they need to clear the arena earlier? I don't know. There's a big concert next door. Yeah, that's why they tried to get everything done early yesterday because they're doing all these sound checks. This would be good, like Vegas time, you know, like the when the Moscone Cup is in America, they start uh, they start at 11 a.m. in Vegas, so it's good time in uh, Europe. And uh, well, they have to flash TV. Yeah. Oh, great break! Yeah. Got a good starter. He made a couple of balls. He's got a good shot on the one. You want to move over? It's a little straight on that four. I mean, he wanted definitely wanted a little bit angle. I have to uh, do something special here. That's empty. He gave it a little smirk. I think he can stun up between the six and the eight from that angle. Well, I don't think he has a lot of angle, but he's going to have to force the angle just to crush this. I mean, you know, maybe. Oh, he's playing a little bit. Follow. Is he coming enough? Far enough? It's close. No. No, he knows. He's uh, he's behind the nine. At least partially. You can see the table. Yeah. That makes more sense. Underheaded. So, what do you think? You like the jump shot here, or well, can he see the he can edge see of it? it? Yeah. I think he can see the edge of it. Um, if he can see the edge, I like playing safe, where you send the five across the table, kind of bank it two rails uh, behind the oh, it, with the inside the seven, English. and then come uh, straight down. Yeah, a little inside English towards the six. Yeah, towards the six. That's a good shot. As long as you can get the five to pass the seven, it might come back over by the ten, huh? Looks like he's using the other spin. This might be a double kiss if he uses right. That's risky. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like that. He caught it. He caught it a little bit. Um. Well, he beat the kiss because the five hit the seven. Yeah. But I think he hit it a little thinner than he wanted. Mm -hmm. He was trying to send the five into the seven. That was... Uh, Wow. Well, it looks like Zuck it's going to be... Uh, uh, he's kind of hanging his head down there. As, uh, he knows he's made a mistake when he had a wide open table. And I got too straight on the... It's tough. On the four ball. <laughs> well... 
No, he's in about the same situation. Still needs the two t turnovers. Yeah, well, he, but he and was. Uh, uh, yeah, he's back in that two turnover situation. So he had an opportunity uh, from a mistake on Thorsten's break. And. Uh, Hey, numbers are going up here. Uh, have uh, 227 viewers. Okay, Mika, I mentioned this before. Do you think it favors a, a right-handed player or a left-handed player to break from either the right side or the left side, depending on how they might miss the rack? Or I notice, uh, I watch Rodney Morris break 10 ball, and he'll miss hit it off to the, I think it's the left or right-hand side. Thorson's uh, making some gesture. Not sure. Oh, is he going to take a break? He might be taking a break. I think uh, Gazakis took the timeout, perhaps. Just Alex to took a timeout. Yeah, yeah, just to kinda regroup just to a little bit. Regroup. <coughs> Put a little stall in the torso for a moment. So I was saying which side to break from. Which side do you like to break from playing ten ball? Right or left? I generally speaking I do break from the right from for the some right. reason. And is there any reason behind that? Do you do you favor one side of the cue ball, or like if you if Not you're really in the middle, I'm just, do you I don't know. I'm just used to it, I guess. I and mean, maybe it could be subconscious. The right side, okay. And we got Antonio Neves from Portugal. My my buddy from Portugal. I haven't been there in a while, but I'd love to go back. I miss the the pork they do there. It's uh, kind of a you know lechon style. Good food. But they huh? call it le leton. Oh yeah. I'm not sure if I that was the right pronunciation, but in any case, it's really good. I'll be there sooner or later. Yeah, man. <laughs> We got Pepsi online. Pepsi Fizz? Mr. Fizz. Okay, Thorsten is uh, studying the rack here, trying to get them all touching. The magic rack's nice. It freezes the balls, but you have to you have to work it a little bit to get them all froze, right? Yeah, you have to make sure. It's just not guaranteed. Just because you put them in make there, sure they're they all push froze. up against each other. The question is, how many shafts we are using right now? I I have two shafts. Although I would carry three if I uh, I would prefer to carry actually three shafts with me you do what's uh, the reason for three because I like having 
um, two shafts are that are exactly the same except for one with a softer tip just in case you play with uh, like slick conditions like this it kind of eats up some of the oh you'd the rather flexion. have a soft tip well no i ha i want to have a like a firm tip and i want to have one that's softer just to compensate for the conditions and then i want to have one that's even lower deflection shaft that you know sometimes you play on a cloth that has a little bit of nylon I think it has a little bit more throw than the standard Simonas. That's interesting. I've, I haven't heard of many players doing that, but I think it's smart. I'd like to... Then you don't have to adjust your aim. You just aim the same way and just, uh, you know, <laughs> go about your business. Yeah, I like that. I might I might get a few shafts I'm actually, made this like is that. like a tip that I shouldn't have maybe said because this is, uh, I think it's uh, not too many guys think about that. Very Got J JP Parmentier, uh, comments on the Moscone Cup teams from both sides. Ah, well, okay. um, well, we got two players here that aren't on the team. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's, it's, so. a, it's brutal, <laughs> <laughs> brutal reality. But uh, uh, any, in any case, I think. Uh, well, let's hear your I'm, wine I'll first, and then I'll wine. Go I'll ahead. Come to terms with the <laughs> fact that I'm not on the team. <laughs> Just have to uh, play a little bit stronger and. You know, I don't know. So uh, I'd say um, I like I like Rodney Rodney for the American team. That that was a smart choice because he's such a moral leader. He's he's like a kind of a good boost for the team. He's just he a good guy to be around. He's he's, he's a good I guy know. to be around. He <laughs> he definitely knows how to joke and lighten things up. And uh, you know he's probably gonna bring the team together more than anybody else could. And uh, he, he's probably the only guy who can, uh, you know. I think control, he's probably got one of the best records of any of the other guys. So, uh, What's that? He's I think Rodney's got one of the best records in the Moscone Cup of any of the other guys on the team. Yeah, when, when Rodney first started playing the Moscone, uh, he was, like, really strong. And then... <coughs> The last couple of years he played, he didn't have such a good record, but I think he's still uh, he's still got a positive record, and you know he's definitely a, a force to reckon with. And then the other guys on the team are they got a pretty solid team this year. I think uh, they have a better chance than uh, some previous years. It's just that you know getting uh, getting the team spirit. Um, that's that's the whole thing, you know. Uh, that's where Europeans are strong, and they understand the importance of uh, the unity. So uh, if if you know the the characters that are on on the U.S. team can get it together. Well, I know Oscar Dominguez was even bummed even out Shane and Boning has to be a little bit more of a team player. He's he's a, he's a great individual player, but he has to. Yeah, yeah. He, he, they got a little not way to only, go. Not only does he have to play a little better, he's, his record in Moscone is not great, but uh, he's going to have to yeah, understand the, the uh, team spirit. I think it's going to be important that the, that the U.S. team gets gets together and, and uh, plays more more like a team. We, you know, when I first was on the Moscone Cup, that was I think that was one of our strengths was, you know, the that we came out and played for our country, you know, and uh, the Europeans were all from different countries, and it just seemed like we could get together better, you know, in previous years, but on the other hand, we're always trying to beat each other every week yeah. throughout the whole year, so <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll end up uh, developing some uh, gripes between ourselves, and then... Uh, it's, it's funny, though, I mean... matches, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've... There, there's a few characters that I don't get along with that great, but then if we do happen to play the Moscone, we kind of push push everything aside for that week and become brothers. Yeah, you know? it's just yeah. the way that it has to be, and that's the only way you're going to win. Well, I think just if if the player American players, uh, if throughout the year they could try a little bit harder to get along with everybody, it would make the Moscone experience easier. You know, just try and. 
just try and be civil and play pool, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, easier said and done. And then um, as far as the European team, I mean, now they got like basically uh, three British guys. Darren, Mark Gray, and then uh, Jason Shaw, even though well, he's Scottish, but still part of part what of the clique, the British clique. Uh, what do you think that's of this? That's easy. Niels and Niels is a, the usual suspect. The Moscone is always solid, and he uh, he's he's got a good understanding of the camaraderie. And then. Uh, do you follow into this six ball here? We got Albin Ocean, and he's uh, he's not a rookie anymore. I think can he cheat the pocket a little bit, and then maybe he's just going to roll it up and try and play the, or is he going to follow into it? I think he has a slight angle. He can kind of nip the six a little bit. Oh, that was a great wow, shot! Wow, that worked just out nice. The eight. Yeah. Wow, bumped it perfect. That was awesome. Good shot. And then yeah. we have so I was saying we have Albin, Niels. Mark Gray, Darren, and Jason. That's a uh, pretty strong. Not a lot team. of. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There's not really a un uh, weak link there. Too bad, right? No. They're gonna be tough to beat. Oh. I know Oscar was bummed. Oscar Dominguez on the American side. He was bummed out that yeah. he didn't make it. Uh, he was fifth on the rankings and he was overlooked. <coughs> I think. And uh, they took uh, who'd they take instead of him? Justin oh, Bergman. Bergman. That's right, Justin Bergman. J Bergman had a good year. He won some Bergman, events. Uh, he's know. had a good year, but he wasn't. He wasn't in the top five, and uh, you know he's a great player, but he's not the same. Uh, character for the team that Oscar would have been I think you know but like uh, I don't know if he if he uh, gets a couple of nice wins together it's easier to have a good time I guess you know uh, but he's a bit of a how do you say a stoic character he's a little bit of a loner he doesn't, he doesn't you know, look like he's a he nice guy much, to get along with. I get along good with uh, Bergman, though. Seems like a he's, decent guy, but he's, he's just a good guy. Yeah. He but uh, yeah, I think that was the surprise pick on the American side, other than Oscar. Uh, yeah, it's always nice to get a captain's pick. I have to. Uh, do a little plug here. I'm actually working on uh, working with a, a guy, a good friend of mine. Uh, well, I'm not going to mention any names right now, but I am coming up with a, an online gaming site. Uh, oh wow! Online betting. It's like a casino, and it's going to be a, the name is going to be betmika.com. Betmika.com. So wow. I think we're going to have a line. Some line for the Moscone. Uh, the, the site's going to be launched pretty soon. And I'm pretty excited about it. Wow. So, uh, that's pretty folks, awesome. uh, you know, near future, if you like, uh, if you like uh, betting on sports, betmika.com. Oh, so be, that's uh, why you're looking. Or that's why you're asking me about the line. Am I going to be one of your uh, go-to guys to make Maybe. lines on the <laughs> matches or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you never responded. You just uh, kept saying like, "Hey, he's a, you know, he needs two mistakes." But you, I, I just need the line. <laughs> yeah. But betmika.com. dot com. You know, it would be interesting to have a kind of a an Asian team. Yeah. So for the gambling for the there, do you do that in Europe? Kind of like Europe? Moscone format. Do you do that? Because I don't think you can do that in the U.S., right? No, we can't do it in the U.S. So the so U.S. is going to be restricted. The, the laws there are different. Uh, but I think uh, for the so rest of uh, the rest of the Americas and uh, Europe and Asia. And so where do you base world, that out of? Where it's going to be based in the Philippines. Based in the Philippines. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, <laughs> transporter. Can we take your money online? <laughs> Technically, I mean, well, I'm not really. Uh, I don't have to uh, put in any of my own money, but uh, it's 
it's going to be an online casino like just like anybody any other casino so uh, Kazakis has put himself in a position to uh, tie the game up again you know level things up and then yeah he's looking good here this, these balls are laying really nice he just needs to roll the two in and play for yeah. the four on the side probably get kind of straight on the three and then just roll it in he's got a touch angle but it's, it's all good maybe you can roll it and off the long rail have a little bounce Either that yeah, I don't think you want to be straight goes, on the four. Maybe he goes under the four and plays the four in a corner. Well, well, he's played. Yeah. He, he, he plays for the inside straight. English shot here. He's kind of straight on this. I'm not it's sure. It's always dangerous when you get straight. You could always yeah get a He's okay angle. though, but he has to uh, play with a little bit of speed here. Or spin here. He elected to spin it, but it's tough with this uh, cloth. It doesn't really That's react so shot. much because it's so dry. Now, do you think he has too much angle here to hold for the nine, or, or you can just hit it with a little bit of inside, real soft? What do you think? Looks like somebody is going to be in uh, asking if I'm going to be in Finland for Christmas. Chances are. And you're right about the laws in sports betting. I mean, um, we're not, we are not entering the market there, obviously. But um, yeah, Uncle Sam kind of likes to keep things tight with the sports thing. That was one of the problems back in the days with the IPT, with the gaming laws. You know, that kind of killed our chances to yeah. become. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'll pick your brain like about this Philippines thing. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty uh, cool. I mean, like you know, a good, that good deal. Maybe uh, we could be uh, getting some, uh, you know, insights from you or you know any other. Yeah. Obviously, need some uh, expert advice. Corey's not a bad pick for that. All right, Ed. He's uh, fading. Have a good night. I uh, hope to uh, see you soon. I want to come try that uh, Chinese eight ball table. At now, are you playing any Chinese spot? eight ball events, Mika? You gonna be playing it? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I would like to. I I like the game. I think it'd be a good game. The tables you. are amazing, actually. You know, they just uh, you know, the Chinese eight ball tables. I think uh kind of like set new standards for uh, quality as far as uh, you know the first of all I mean they're they're heated so I think it makes the ball run a little better the conditions stay dry always yeah so they use the steel cushions and the tables I mean, are very level also very level they just roll so true I mean they have to roll true because it's super tight too I mean you you have like one Coffee millimeter you down roll, the rail. You, you roll a soft roll a ball down the rail and it rolls off and you're screwed. But yeah. it doesn't happen much on those tables. Mm -hmm. These diamond tables roll pretty pretty good here. Yeah, they do. I haven't had anything roll out since I've been here. So I think uh, Paul did a good job setting them up. Torsen hit a great break here, and uh, you know if he gets this one in the side, he's, uh, it's pretty Might much be like playing safe. Might just connecting the dots. No, he got oh, the side he pocket. Yeah, he had it. I don't know if it went by the three. He's a little straight on the two. I think now he can uh, come two rails. I think he just can just follow two rails. Follow it with a little bit of left spin. Yeah, either play for the side, or I'm not sure if the three goes by the four in the corner, which it looks like it does. So you can just play for the corner. No, he came came out for the side. Well, if he can make it in the side, just go out in the middle of the table. 
Give Just yourself roll a an angle. Oh, he played the corner. He had the corner. Yeah, you're right. Now he's straight in. I think it, I think you were you had a better shot if he shoots it in the side he can get a nice angle to come across one rail for the six. Now I, now he's got to hit a pretty big power draw. Yeah, you know, and it's he's got to worry about the, the eight. eight. Yeah, but his stroke is, he's been stroking the balls nice. I think he has a little angle actually, uh, bringing the cue ball away from the six. So he's going to need a lot of right hand spin on this to bring it back over, I think. Yeah, but then he has to watch out for the eight. He's gonna have to <coughs> just, I think you just have to settle with a, a lot of angle on the six instead of trying to get perfect because you don't want to hit the eight. Yeah. So just a straight, straight back draw. Open bridge. He did an open bridge there. Okay. Yeah, he just took the shot. He didn't try and... Uh, do the big power draw yeah, up and back. Didn't try to get too cute. Because he could have went off the eight and scratched or something. Anything could have happened. Could have gone off that. the air. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, if this ball's froze, I like rolling it. But looks like it's a little bit off the rail, so I think he's going to shoot it firm and come across. Not easy shot. Wow. Yeah. I almost wobbled. That one came away from the rail a little bit, but still a good shot. He kind of cheated the pocket a little bit there. On I a think, uh, on wet conditions, that ball would have uh, rattled. I think Thorson's got a little more pressure on him now because the match is a little closer. He's not ahead by much. Mm -hmm. But if he wins this game... Uh, yeah, if he wins this game, as as he will, he keeps that slight advantage. So, uh, how many finals f have you seen Alex Kazakis in? Euro tours? He won any Euro tours? Or um, <coughs> I think I believe he's. I'm not sure if he's won the Euro tour, but I know he won the the European Championship. Um, and uh, I have to plug uh, one of my uh, products from Finland is the the Town Jump and Brake Tips. Break and jump, tips. the Tom, break and jump tips, and uh, you know he uh, he actually won the European champ championships like a week after he put one of our tips on his break cue. So oh wow, it's a pretty good uh, testament to the. Oh, so that might be the secret why he's uh, breaking so well, huh? He's breaking with Tom for sure. I think 90% <coughs> of the top players use Tom. You should try it, Corey. Give it a shot. Yeah. All right. Well, I I tried every tip. What about on the Thorsten? Market. Thorsten, he's, uh, he's got Tom. Does he? Okay. Yeah. On the jump cue? Yep. Well, I'm not sure if on the jump cue, but he, I know he's has it on the break cue. Oh, okay. Yeah, pool has a little bit of a stigma as far as the the uh, online uh, or you know the, just the casino style betting goes because this in the past has been a lot of characters that like to throw matches and I mean it's just a bit touchy but I think uh, events like Moscone are pretty safe because they're guys that are trying hard to hard to win and not there's no monkey business yeah I'll tell you what I would have liked to break uh, uh, the the golden breaks they bet the golden breaks and the one year when they had them breaking from the middle 
Didn't they, ma they yeah. made you guys break from the dead center one year, right? Yeah, I had a golden break against uh, Shane Van Boning that year. Yeah. Hill Hill. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> that, that was pretty sweet. I, I would have liked to bet but, that uh, because I think breaking from the dead center playing nine ball gives you more of a chance to make the nine. Cause oh yeah. Back ball goes into the nine a lot. So. Yeah, that's what you kind of have to go for. Not sure what the odds on a golden break are, but. Well, I think he can follow two rails. Is that right? Yeah, a little top, Is top left. It? Yeah, there you go. Get kind of straight on mm -hmm. the four. It's pretty stop stop now. Maybe he'll come forward for the side. Mm -hmm. Looks like, like he's to got have a nice little angle. bit more. Ang he's got a little nice angle. angle to follow into it's the good. rail and get for the side. I think. Yeah. Just have to be, just to bear down. I mean, he uh, missed a six like this earlier. Similar shot. He's taking his uh, merry time here. Yeah, I mean, if he's not comfortable with it, he can always stop the cue ball and play for the five in the corner. Went forward. Yeah. A little too far. Now he's got an angle coming away from the eight, so he's going to either have to it's okay. pinch the cue ball with some draw to hold there for the eight, or he needs to let the cue ball go and go two rails. I like hitting it firm. Just on, use a little bit of a. I think he's got too much angle to hold it. Yeah. Stop to it. Come two rails. There's a little so bit he's of. So he's got to hit this real firm with some left spin, kind of center ball, come off the tangent line of the five and two rail. Yeah. Touch, draw, stop, yeah. spin. It's perfect. Yeah, so you hit pretty close to the middle of the cue ball with a lot of spin on that shot and, and try and get the cue ball to come off like a stop shot so it just goes right on the tangent line. He's fell a little straight on this eight. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's going to have a long shot on the nine. I kind of like, if you, got, if you have the angle, I kind of like going forward on this to just make sure you give yourself an angle on the nine and then just follow the nine and go to, two rails kind of up by the side. And leave yourself a shot on the... Because if you try and draw it, it can kind of get away from you sometimes. I like, I like the draw. I like the draw there. Yeah, I like this shot. Well, he's left a little more distance here, right? Than he wanted. If he would have got a good angle on the 8, he could have got closer to the 9. Yeah, but it's still but fairly easy. Pretty, pretty comfortable. Just draw up near yeah, the side pocket. Yeah, he doesn't feel comfortable. <laughs> Somebody mentioned Mike LeBron. That's the famous. That was a famous uh, little game that they threw. Uh, I think it was Challenge of Champions one year. It was Body Hall, Mike LeBron. <laughs> That's a fun match to watch. I've watched that Part match a few times. You never really know what happened. They know there's a lot of pressure on that stuff, but it, it wow. sure didn't look good. I yeah, know. It's pretty obvious. Uh, it's too bad. You know, those... Uh, you can't really mess with those guys in Vegas when they set up games like that because they... they they figure it out, man, and then they just don't do business with you anymore. Yeah. All right, well, Alex Kazakis tied it up? Or no, 6 5 now? I think what it's uh, six all. Six all. I think it's six all. Well, pressure's on Thorsten here. Yeah. I mean, Thorsten, he's been leaving. He's been leading this whole set, back and forth. But now he's gonna need to step it up. 
just keep keep doing what he what he's doing. Keep holding his serve. And uh Now he's moved over to the left side again on the break. Now I wonder why he did that. He had good result yesterday, break it from here. He's making the seven ball on the side. Let's see if he makes a seven on the side. Four straight back. He crushed it. But I does it come up dry? I think he hit it a little too hard. Wow. I mean he hit it so great, but he's come up dry. Yeah. I don't think he got <coughs> a good rack. This is a... Uh, this could be a little shift, momentum shift here now, if uh, Alice can take advantage of this opportunity. Those balls didn't look like they opened up very good. All right, well, uh, you can shoot the one with some outside English and go between the four six, but then you're pretty much going to be straight in on the two, going that way. I or like inside English here. Inside and go between the four seven. Gives you an it's angle. It's probably safer there. to do the outside. Uh, he ran into the four. Look at this. He's got that's a shot. Though. That's a bad shot. I think he just overcut the one a little bit. Maybe. Uh, uh, or maybe the spin didn't grab as much as he thought it would. But, you know, still the. Like I said earlier, the conditions are so dry. I think he's got a, a little bit of angle. He's got to hit this real he should firm. Have, he should have cheated the pocket a little bit, you know, on that shot. Yeah, he might have been trying to. He maybe just didn't hit it hit it well. He's going to have to uh, hit this pretty firm if he wants to create any, hmm. any movement on the cue ball. He's going to have to, like, hit it pretty hard. What do you think he's gonna? I think even if he just draws back a little bit, he can he can cut the, the three in and go between the four seven for the four in the corner by the six. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't try and do too too much with this, you know. I don't want to. You don't want to yeah. slam it. Miss you the don't want to risk uh, missing the Because the three's ball. laying okay. You can make this the three is this from is there. the um, advantage he's been looking for the whole match is to to uh, break. Torsten serve and get a lead. You know? Yeah. So he's had a couple opportunities here. Uh, if he can take advantage of them, he can. He could actually be ahead uh, two games if he wins this game and breaks and runs out. You so know, it's, uh, interesting statistic is that um, he's um, even though he's a uh, Greek, he's like um, Alex is an uh, Albanian Greek, and so is Nick Malai and Nick beat me in this tournament in the finals a few years back so he could oh be wow. the second hmm. Albanian Greek that wins this tournament. Oh, okay. A little uh, you don't tidbit watch out for there. those Albanian Greeks. <laughs> I heard they're pretty good. <laughs> they are pretty good, man. Uh, okay, well, he's got a steep angle on the three. I don't know if he's going to run the cue ball into the six. He played the two well, though, and it's nice to get close to I the three I like this. I think I shoot this with inside. He's going to go under the six. He's going under the six. Wow, what a shot that was to it's get under shot. the six. Good shot. Yeah. I think that was taking a chance. He had to be very accurate with the cue ball to get it underneath there. Well, I think it was the right shot. He's uh, yeah. put himself in the driver's seat here. Just uh, have to kind of like buckle up and... Stay, stay on the road. Yeah, this looks pretty straightforward here. The cue ball is going to go to the right cushion, straight in on the five, six. The eight's laying in the toughest well, position he is of Greek, any of the other ball. That's for sure. But uh, I happen to know that he is Albanian Greek. So I guess is there a lot of Albanians in Greece? Then I guess yes, that's what it is. It seems like a lot of migration from did different you know that countries around. Did you know that Mother Teresa was Albanian? Oh, wow. And apparently so is Robert De Niro. Even though he's, uh, Robert De Niro's Italian, but, you know, Italian-American, uh, but he's, uh, 
Albanian roots. Hmm. Okay, Erwin, we can make a bet on that. <laughs> <laughs> Malaka. <laughs> Is he gonna scream Malaka? Erwin, you don't you gotta do your fact checks, man. <laughs> you know the uh, airport in uh, Tirana is called Mother Teresa Airport for a reason. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've uh I've traveled a little bit, so uh, you know. Make make it uh, I way will around. take my word for it. Well, what do you so think here? here we go. Uh, Alex Firm is going to get the lead. Pretty exciting for him. Yeah, good comeback for him. He made a few little, little yeah, he was down two games. And he's looking like he's feeling feeling more comfortable now. So. Okay, let's say she was born in Macedonia. I mean, you know, that's uh, fair enough. Were you wrong on that? No. She's no. still Albanian. Somebody's doing Wikipedia here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what about De Niro? Did you get the De Niro part? I think uh, Sicily is like 50% Albanian, you know, the whole population. Wow. They carry a lot of uh, Albanian traditions there. Hmm. My favorite, come to think of it, is uh, I, my, one of my favorite countries to go to is uh, Italy. So if you're in Italy, and you're in I love Sicily. The, I love the food. Um, I love the fashion. Um, I'm a fan of... Uh, Football, as we Europeans say it, uh, Americans call it soccer. But uh, it, it, Italians are pretty hardcore about it, and I always, I always root for the uh, Italians when they play the World Cup. So that's my my thing. I have never been to Sicily, though. Uh, I would love to go there. Heard great things about it. Sicily. So you've never been to Sicily, but it, you say it's fifty percent Albanians live there. It's a pretty. There's a pretty strong Albanian contingent in Sicily. Oh, okay. I hear. Um, somebody asked me a question. When was the first time I came to the states? It was actually in 1996. I played a tournament in Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa, okay. California, and it was a ESPN. Uh, I forgot what is what it was called, but uh, it was one of those ES ESPN events. Do you remember the first Pretty time exciting. we ever played, me and you, in America? Um, not necessarily. I think the first time we ever played was in uh, uh, Olathe, Kansas. At C.J. Wiley's Ooh. tournament, you remember that tournament? Yeah, he did. Uh, I do. Well, who won? Uh, I think I got third in that. Efren Reyes won, beat Archer in the final. That's but funny because played I early. played. We I played, played early, one of those tournaments in Olathe, Kansas, in 1996, and I um, I was second to uh, Jose Perica in that tournament. Even though I beat Perica earlier, I beat. Strickland twice in that tournament. I beat Perica and then I played Perica again in the final and then just uh he's he kind of just uh, I think he drilled me in the final. He was just his experience was like mm -hmm. you could like see the knowledge was so much be better than mine, but you know. Made it to the finals, it was good experience for me. I don't think me. this was ninety six. This was uh had to be when we played was probably like 98, 99, 99. Yeah, something like that. You came on the scene a little bit 
couple of years later than me. Being that you are a few years younger, and uh, but your birthday is coming up soon, isn't it? You're, you're going to be 39. Yeah. You're, you're approaching that magic 40. Yeah, I'm going to be 29 uh, uh, November, 20, November 20th. All right, so uh, heads up, guys. Uh, if you want to send uh, Corey some birthday presents, or at least uh, birthday wishes, is uh, November 20? November 20, yeah. Yeah. You can always buy buy a birthday DVD, one of my uh, school of pool. Maybe one of these instructional DVDs yeah. so it would be a good gesture. Right, that would be nice. So here we go. Um, Alex has a tough shot on the one. Um, two balls down table. What what do you like doing here? I mean, do you do you think you can just roll it and just take the angle on the two? But then it's tricky because the three and five. Yeah, the way I think they he are. can roll it and not scratch. But he's not going to get good enough position on the two. Yeah, he and the, the way the tables are playing, you know, if it was playing a little bit, like if the conditions were a little bit more humid, you could actually spin the two with inside English and go into, into the, the five. five. Yeah. But then, uh, I'm it's not sure if he can kill the cue ball with a straight bottom English and cut the one in the side. Yeah, like I like that with shot with a little snap stroke. Efren hits that shot real good. He could you probably you really kill the have ball. to. Uh, it's a difficult shot to very hit, but very difficult shot. You have to, you have to kill the speed of the cue ball and, and still get the angle. Like a real soft it's draw. Touchy. You have to hit as soft as you can and still get the draw once it hits the uh, one. If but the one uh, was a touch closer to the center, you could just slam it in the corner and then come around the angles. But yeah, I think I think the shot you you chose is the safe play. But uh, you know, he could also play the one and I think play safe on the two. Yeah, he might he might have to do that. I think if he does kill kill in the side, he might be able to run out. But uh, it's nothing easy here. He knows this is a big opportunity. Yeah, he's taking his time. That's smart. Make sure you make a good decision here. I actually think that scratch from what, looking at this angle, that might might actually scratch. Is he going to go around? No, he's slow rolling it. Okay, yeah. That's, that's a smart shot. Smart shot, and actually, it ha that ball had a lot of speed on it when it went in. He could have did better than that if he hit he it softer. He could have. Yeah, had it even and, uh, better. I don't. I don't think there's any chance he can uh, play the inside English and bump the five. It's just too great of an angle. And the table's sliding a little bit because it's a new cloth, so it makes it a lot harder for yeah. that, that inside to grab. Yeah. Uh, I don't see a very easy safety there's here either. There's He's no easy a, position. There's no easy safe. I think what he might need to do is just cinch the two, come up. And then maybe kick safe on the three, kick the three up table and try and stop the cue ball. Do you think he can go up and down? Mm -hmm. Maybe so up and down is dangerous if you hit a ball. Well, it is dangerous for sure. But there's a gap, you know. Uh, if you can come to the same position where he is now. Wow. Well, he can at least see the three ball. Yeah, but he might have to go rail first with a little bit of draw and just kick it, try kick to and stop it. freeze the cue ball there. I think that was a risky position that he tried there. I mean, I know, you know, again, the slide uh, created that little bit of a follow on the cue ball, and that's why it didn't come straight, straight up perpendicular to the, the rail. One. He could have shot the one a little softer left the cue ball with a little more angle and then maybe he w he would have been able to bump into the five but uh, anyway <coughs> as I was saying that the, the two ball there the way he hit it he needed to put a little bit more left in order for the cue ball to come perpendicular mm. to the to short rail okay he's doing the kick shot like you say so Oh, he hit it nice and full. He hit it good. Yeah, that's perfect. 
He did leave Thorsten a jump shot. He's a, this jump shot this is a standard. You gotta go for it. Uh, Alex knows. He's left him a fairly easy jump, but uh, I mean, st still there's a lot of green. I mean, <laughs> well, I should say blue. <laughs> Well, now if you make the jump shot, you don't exactly get position. I mean, I don't I don't think I'd try and draw the cue ball. I just try and no, stop it right there. Just stop it. I jump in the uh, drawing the cue ball might not be bad. This is not a walk in the park here. Yeah, make sure you chalk that thing up, that town tip. Well, you always have to make sure you chalk up. That could be a disaster. Disastrous. He's left uh, Alex an easy out here, and then uh, Alex can take uh, advantage. Yeah. I need some of that rice we had yesterday. You know, that rice with the beef. What, yeah, what, what do they good. call it? Oh, it was lamb. How about some of that the the ri the little rice cloth? Yeah, we need some of that. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I can't wait. Okay, we'll go somewhere after the match. We'll go eat. What are we racing to here, Mika? Nine. Nine in the finals. Now, previous years they've done race to eleven. Race to 13, I think. Was it race to 13 or 12, maybe? 9, 8. Thank you, Olga, for the compliments. We are we're getting some uh, nice feedback from uh, our commentary. Oh, beautiful. Apparently, we Thank make you. a good team. Yeah, that's great. Tag team. Yeah. Well, you know, put, put the word in for us for the Moscone Cup. Then. Yeah, maybe we should uh, do go that. do some commentary at the Moscone. That'd be fun. I, I wouldn't mind. It would be... A a lot of fun. So, uh, Sky Sports. We'll shout out to Sky Sports here. Yeah. What's up? Ah, uh, it's just, it's probably one of my favorite tournaments I've ever played. And I mean, I played the World Cup too, and that was pretty neat. But, uh, the Moscone Cup is just. David is asking here who. Uh, who do we consider the best all-around player today? Probably, uh, probably Alex is a pretty Alex Pagalion for the all-around. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you, Dennis Urkolo is pretty solid too. He's tough at the. He he is solid, but lately has been less solid. I've yeah, seen, like I've seen Maybe him actually miss ago. balls that he didn't <laughs> miss like two years ago. He didn't miss anything. Two years ago, he was really tough to beat at one pocket. He was tough to beat anything two years ago. I actually beat him first time in New York just recently since the longest time I remember. I used to uh, gamble with him in the Philippines and uh, I, I was uh, I came out ahead. But uh, he's, uh, that was like years and years ago, like a, a decade ago. And then he, he's become like uh, one of the strongest on the planet. Maybe if, if not even the universe. Yeah, Alex is uh, is one of the favorites to win the uh, all-around Derby City for sure. I played him in uh, Kuwait. He, didn't, he actually he wasn't playing as well as I've seen him play in Kuwait. So uh, Marty says Ralph was the first to play in the States, but you know Ortman was also uh, playing some pretty mean straight pool back in his. Uh, Youth. I think Ortman won the U.S. Open uh, straight pool in 1992, if I'm not mistaken. And that was a pretty uh, strong message. That there was a little bit of a storm warning coming from Europe. That uh, watch out. And since then, I think the Europeans have t taken over the uh, as far as the best uh, straight pool players in the world. 
You guys play a lot of straight pool tournaments over there. Is there a few or? Yeah, no, I think they they have a few. Uh, well, we always have the European Championships, but then there's a lot of uh, national leagues where they play like three man teams, where one guy plays nine ball, one guy plays eight ball, and one guy plays straight pool. And I kind of like that. Yeah, I like straight format, pool. And it's it's a good. I'd like to play a little more of that. You know. I think that kind of team thing is pretty cool because you know you you always you know you have three matches. I mean, it's not going to be tied. Somebody's going to win, either at three zero or two one. Yeah, I think we talked about straight pool on the on the Chinese pool table, and they said that uh, Torsen's made a ball and a break. He doesn't have anything easy on the one. Um. 2-7 are kind of tricky. Sorry, I'm sorry to like uh, cut oh you off yeah. on the straight ball stuff, but uh, yeah, what do let's, you do let's here? Assess the table here. I think you gotta bank the one like two rails down table and uh, you just play hit safe. the left half of the one and send the one down behind the ten on the end rail and the cue ball out kind of in the middle of the table. Try and hook them behind the four. 10. That's yeah. an option. As long as you don't sell out any easy shots, the, the two sevens. The thing is, is all the object balls are on the cushion. So there's really nothing to hide behind in the middle of the table. You have the three you could come across mm -hmm. and try and uh, get the cue ball behind the three. Yeah, I like that. That's a little dangerous, though, because... Uh, I don't know if he's got enough angle to do that. As uh, Alex has won like four games in a row, wasn't he down six four? Yeah. Okay, he tried Torsen's to get behind. Torsen's doing it. what you said, and then you had the other balls. Yeah. So <coughs> the four and ten was there, so he used all the blockers. Yeah, those were the only ones in the on the table that he could even hide behind because that was a great shot, actually. I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. You know, uh, Paul Smith brought up a good point. I didn't realize that Alex is on the hill. Oh, Alex it's is a on race the hill. Nine. Racing the nine. Okay. Well, here, I like kicking to the bottom rail. I thought last year we played a race to 11, but I'm not... I could be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So well, whatever I it was, I, last, I lost a hill hill last year in the yeah. final... Yeah. Ruslan missed the one, but it hooked me. <laughs> yeah, I like kicking, I like kicking <coughs> the bottom brutal. rail. Try and kick the one up towards the can, corner pocket. Can he kick two rails? I like kicking the one up towards the corner pocket, but spin the cue ball like maybe from the middle oh. diamond, and then the cue ball should go over towards the two and Listen. send the one up by the five. How That's about this? Like. Can he? Can he? Is uh, he jumping? What is he doing? What is here? he? I'm I'm really not sure what he's doing here. Well, he's got to masse around a little bit. Oh, wow. I don't know what I happened there. Would, it looked like I he thought it would kick two rails. Right it. Didn't, didn't, well, he had to go around the three. I think yes, he, he had to go around and, and then to miss the ten. To miss the ten, and then the spin grabbed too much off yeah. the bottom rail. I'm actually surprised it grabbed that much, because he thought it was going to still slide, and now it's mm -hmm. left Torsten a great opportunity to get on the two. Which he did, but that's uh, he's landed dead straight. That's no good. I'm not sure if he can follow this that's out. That's kind of hard to actually <laughs> land that straight. Yeah, that was a little bit unlucky. To uh, any kind of angle, he's going to be able to. You know, get you know, you can actually play this kind of Rail super first. hard, and then maybe just draw it, and you you got the five down table, and it's, you're not going to scratch. Maybe you can create a little spin off the five, like a little. Uh, Low left, real hard. Yeah, That's low left, he's queuing up real hard. He's gonna I do mean, this. You don't, there's no risk. Yeah. As long as you make the ball. Oh, what a shot! Oh, he cheated the pocket. He was able to cheat. Watch out, side pocket. Look at the spin on that ball. Where's the cue ball? Oh wow! Wow, that That's was brutal. very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. God, he hit such a nice shot. And now Alex that is on the hill with ball in hand. Hill and ball in hand, balls. wide open. He's uh, probably going to win the match here. We have a new um, champion here at the Kremlin Cup.
Looking like it. Most likely. That's unlucky. And, That's uh, scratch. And he is, uh, again, after Malai has won this tournament a few years back, the second uh, Greek guy to win this tournament, Albanian Greek. Well, for me, I don't set this up straight in a draw. I would use the rail. I would... I would uh, I'm off the okay, rail buddy. Here. I'll check my messages. So now so he's fell a little straight on the four. <coughs> he's okay. The six is hanging. He can just yeah almost play like a stop a shot here. Just and come out, come out off the five to the middle of the table. Yeah, six hanging, thing, sevens by the side. I mean, it's all natural here. Yeah, the main it's thing you don't want to hit the five too hard and uh, hook yourself behind the seven. Right. I like leaving. A lot of angle here, so and just play uh, this one inside English and just come come to the center of the table pretty much. I mean, yeah. The main thing here is don't hit it too hard and get hooked behind the seven or ten. If you end up on the left rail yes, and you have to thin cut the six, it's okay. You should still be able the, to get out. But the ment mental thing about this is don't tell yourself don't go behind the seven or ten because you know <laughs> you gotta say land short. <laughs> because you know the subconscious mind plays funny tricks when you like say those things. Yeah. And he's played it perfect. That's a good shot. It was now he can <laughs> play for the a little side. <laughs> it was like almost this a little a bit scary there. He almost ball he in hand. Uh, if, if I had ball in he hand, he was I bracing might himself right there. there. So now play for the side. Roll down for yeah, the eight. Just come off the rail a touch. You know, just make sure you have an angle. Really easy. Okay, now we don't want any ball to skid here. <laughs> he should be fine. <laughs> Please, Corey, let's not jinx it, man. <laughs> I think the I way to the avoid cushion. the skid is to play a draw here. To draw this ball, really? I would but roll it down. I think the, the roll is the right shot. I mean, it's it's not gonna skid. Forget about it. He's got a. He needs an angle. Yeah. Okay. He's got angle. So now you just uh, follow or draw here, Mika. I'll tell you what, though. Like draw he this or follow? I like following it. Just touch of inside. Touch maybe just inside. even, maybe just like, just straight follow. Mm -hmm. He's putting a little bit of left English, and it's, uh, it's looking oh, like a champ that's now. that's a good one. That's looking nice. And he's won uh, five games in a row to clinch it. Big win for Alex Kazakas here. Very big. Second Albanian Greek. Malaka. Malaka. <laughs> I have to put it in there. Uh, he's going to yell Malaka. Well, look at this. Alex We've got the. Um, <laughs> that was a friendly, uh, yeah. friendly little greeting hug. Alex. Alex is overjoyed. He's yeah. Did they take Alex? Is really ha happy. He's probably got a few uh, yeah. Greeks back home, of, and why not? Albanians are celebrating. I know the online presence has been uh, has doubled since uh, we started, and uh, congratulations to Alex. Um, what a great what a great comeback. Yeah, it was a great match. He, he hung in there. He dug deep and hung in there and uh, ran away with it. Well, it's been a good tournament. I've uh, enjoyed my trip here to Russia for the first time. And uh, nice to commentate with you. Yeah, Learned Corey. Yeah. Had a good time. As is Alex's moment to shine here is uh He's got all the young kids doing some autographs. <laughs> Alex is a good guy. I mean they're both Torsten and Alex, you know, can't say it enough good things about them but uh it's it's nice to see him win he's a uh, 
this is probably one of the biggest tournaments uh, ever won. In fact, you know, of course, oh, the European yeah. Championship was big, but this is like oh, this is a nice this is a nice here. international uh, event for him yeah, to WPA win. WPA event. He's gonna jack up his WPA points. He'll be up there, right? Oh yeah. Well, this is mm, this is like a second tier uh, event, but it, it's important points, not nevertheless. Yeah, I think this was a great event, and I, I th I'd like to see this event grow in coming years, you know. It's a nice venue. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to come back next year. I like the way they run this event. Just got to work on my pyramid game. <laughs> and uh, see what we can do next year. I would like to see a, an event here in the summertime see what this place looks like in uh, warm weather you know yes that would be nice it's been a bit harsh on the weather side here last night was Snow nice it was deep. it was snowy kind of nice and white yeah Uh, the first few days it was slushy rain and nasty, and now it's finally cooled down to where the snow's starting to pack in. And uh, looks like they're getting ready to play the pyramid finals now. I'm gonna sit and watch that. I, I really enjoy watching the pyramid. I'm gonna go eat. I'm starving. Yeah. I'd like to thank uh, ABN Billiards for bring in the tables here for one diamond tables and uh also uh on bisky uh what a great venue this is and uh great tournament nicely run all right well the russian billiard federation highly involved yeah everybody did a great job here yeah our guy uh, Vladimir here is uh, awesome, and uh, we have Yuri. Yeah, Vladimir and Yuri. Yuri has been driving us around town. They're very nice hosts. Excellent. Good job. We are in Moscow, and uh, I think it's over and out here from uh, Moscow. Thank so you guys well, uh, for tuning in, and uh, see you around the see world you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a tradition that carries over here, you know, him smashing plates uh, somewhere in uh, Moscow could not be uh, viewed as very sportsmanlike, but I know it's a tr tradition in uh, Greece. So here we have the Alex, the champion. Uh, which one of these headsets? Hey, man. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you. What a great uh, final you played. Uh, you, you hung in there. After 5-3. <laughs> yeah, you were down uh, by two games. And then uh, I think, uh, was it 5-3 and 6-4 maybe even? 5-3, 5-5, 6-5, and oh, after 9-6. Yeah. But right, at the so beginning I was so nervous. I, I don't know why. I couldn't, I couldn't focus. It was my first, uh, actually it was my first big final that I've ever played. Yeah. So other than the other than the European Championships that yeah, you yeah, won, this is, this is like probably the, the biggest uh, final in like uh, you know as far yeah. as like professional yeah, yeah, yeah. tournaments and uh, you know the money is pretty nice too. And yeah, uh, also the money. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, w I was saying that you know my my impression is that you you're uh, Greek, but you're also Albanian. Yeah, like I born Albania. there. He was born in Albania. See, I was right. I born in Some Albania. guy was saying here, oh no, he's not Albanian, but uh, I was like, you know, he's Albanian Greek. I live all my life there. Then the funny but thing yeah. is that you're uh, the second Albanian Greek who won this tournament because yeah. Nick Malai won yeah. this tournament a few the years back. The, the first year that we that we came here before six years, I think. He ah, he was in the final against you. Yeah, also. he beat me <laughs> in the final. So <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so and in uh, this year I finished the uh, third, and he beat me in the semifinal. Okay, Nick. I think that year I played uh semi-final with Ruslan I think. Ruslan I yeah. played I beat him in the yeah. semis and I lost to Nick yeah well anyway 
uh, good shooting. You uh, you took your time when it was important, and uh, you yeah. made some good outs. And uh, there was some tricky moments there, but uh, in the end, uh, I think your break started working. Yeah, I was really nervous. I didn't break so good, but the in balls the was getting. You had a you had a scratch, a scratch on yeah. the break, and it looked uh, looked like. Thorsten was gonna take advantage, but then uh, you you got back in the match and you st you hung in there and uh, you yep. put him away. So uh, good shooting. Thank you. Must be feeling pretty happy right now. Very, I'm very happy. I'm very satisfied with myself. I was so n I'm happy that I ca I could handle the match with so much nervous. I I, I don't I don't remember myself yeah. with so much nervous. Well, it's important to when you when you get nervous to kind of like just try to fuel yourself as like a part of the you know positive energy yeah that you get from the nervousness so you i think you you were smart to take your time when it was like some tricky shots and then you you played the, the normal pace when when it was easy but you know i think you managed it well you had a had it yourself with a good composure and uh that's what yep. makes you win the match you know matches like this true so uh what is uh, what else do you have to say to your i think uh well there was like about 470 viewers at the end of the final, and I think you have a lot of Greek fans uh, yeah. watching as well. And for sure, why not Albania? I just want, so I just want to th want to tell uh, that uh, thank you for everyone, for the messages of uh, yesterday, for the support, and uh, here I am. I win it. <laughs> yeah, Malaka. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I somebody was asking, are you gonna go? Uh, you know, are you gonna break some plates tonight in some restaurant? You know, throw plates around. Maybe in Greece. Maybe in Greece. <laughs> in yeah, Greece. I think you better wait <laughs> till you get to Greece. Yes, <laughs> because uh, here they may may not like it too much. You know, it's not part <laughs> yeah. of their tradition. Okay, so uh, they're starting the pyramid finals, and where it's over and out. Congrats again. Thank you, man. Good shooting. Thank you.